in the packet. The router is supposed to throw the packet away if it doesn't have exactly a 12-byte hash in it. But for some reason, a lot of people didn't implement that. And uh, uh, you know, because your, your actual hash calculation is going to have a result that's longer than 12 bytes, uh, the memory comparison operation has to be constrained by something. And a lot of people constrained it by the length of the hash in the packet, which is another classic security mistake. Don't trust lengths in packets. Uh, so you know, the consequence of this is that the attacker need only send one byte. And if that byte is the same as the first valid byte of the valid message digest, the, the packet is considered authenticated and he gets in. Um, in practice, this means he sends 256 interception requests with different, uh, all different values of that first byte, and one of them will be accepted. This vulnerability was disclosed in June of 2008. It impacted a lot of people, a lot of SNMP implementations, not just Cisco's. Um, some implementations were vulnerable for over six years. What's interesting is most of the Cisco router, uh, most of the iOS versions that support this lawful intercept so uh, capability were not actually vulnerable to this bug. And that's weird because lawful intercept has been a part of Cisco routers for many years now. And so there were many years when some Cisco SNMP implementations had this bug and others did not. Uh, I found one that, that had both the feature and the bug, uh, and it, it supports, <clears throat> it runs on these Cisco 1000 or 10,000 series routers. These are edge routers for broadband service providers like DSL or cable modem companies. Uh, so there's a lot of people's home internet access might be provided through a router like this. Uh, one of the things that this router does that I have a personal uh, axe to grind about is it supports service provider VPNs. Uh, so in, in the security industry, when we sell VPNs, um, we're selling an encrypted tunnel between two points so that a, a, a company can build a, a secure connection between remote offices. And I think that people have this built-in expectation that when you say VPN, you mean encryption. But there are a lot of service providers that sell service provider VPNs that don't have encryption. And I, I personally feel like it's a confusing thing to use the same word to refer to something that doesn't involve cryptography. When you push service providers about this, what they tell you is you don't have to worry about that because service provider networks are not subject to unauthorized surveillance. Well, guess what? Yes, they are. And um, this, uh, you can actually specify a VPN in the, uh, in the interception request. Uh, so you can, uh, you can specify any of the VPNs that is configured on the, on the router. So, in addition, um, this is the third uh, issue, uh, the, the, there's lack of audit trails here. Um, first of all, uh, attacks on SNMP v3 authentication are very noisy. If you're brute forcing usernames and passwords, you're sending a lot of stuff that's getting rejected. Um, even, this, uh, even this password attack involves sending 256 requests, one of which is going to get tossed out, right? Um, so you would think that uh, a service provider would be able to notice that. Uh, Cisco's lawful intercept documentation advises you to configure SNMP traps. And the documentation strongly implies that SNMP v3 authentication failures, or at least it used to imply that SNMP v3 authentication failures would produce traps. Uh, so I tested this on all of the iOS versions that I had in my lab, and it didn't work. Um, no, no authentication failure traps were, were, were issued for any out of whack SNMP v3 messages. So I sent this to Cisco. I thought it was an authentic, I thought it was an implementation bug. And I said, no, this doesn't work. What's the story? I don't know why they, I was not privy to the debate that occurred internally in Cisco when I sent them this, but they decided that the implementation was right and the documentation was wrong. And they apparently changed the documentation so that it no longer says that uh, traps are generated when SNMP v3 authentication failures occur. So um, to me, I, I think that um, a network administrator would want to know that his network was under attack. And so it would be a good idea to fix this, but I'm going to talk about how I, what I recommend be done about all this at the end of the talk. Um, so this, th there's another problem uh, in the audit trail space, and this is the sort of key architectural uh, flaw that I think exists in a lot of this lawful intercept technology. Um, the, 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 the user can turn the logs off. Uh, the control, so that you can, the, the router will generate SNMP traps that tell you that a wiretap is taking place. But the, you can specify in the interception request that you don't want those traps to be generated, and, and the router won't generate them. So the attacker can just say, don't, don't log this. Don't create an audit trail, please. Um, there's actually a reason that they designed this this way. 
in, um, in the service provider, the people who are responsible for provisioning wiretaps are not the same people that run the network. And they don't want the people who run the network to find out what the police are doing. You know, they don't want the router, if, if, if the router administrator could specify any destination address for traps related to lawful intercept, he could add in an IP address of his computer at home. At any time a lawful intercept, uh, you know, the lawful intercept interface was, was used, he would get notified. Then he could call his friends up and say, hey, Louie, you need to stop going to those websites. They have a warrant this time. So <laughs> that's a problem, right? Um, so, so basically, th th they've decided to implement this stuff in, in many cases without an audit trail. And I, I, I've, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to discuss, I, th I think there's actually a better way to do this so that there would be an audit trail, but the, but the router administrator is not able to play games like that. And I'll, I'll talk about that later. Um, another issue is the flexibility of the output stream. This is the fourth problem. Uh, you can send, once you've gotten an interception request accepted by the router, you can send the traffic anywhere on the global network over any port or any service. You can send it as a UDP uh, uh, formatted, this packet cable UDP format. You can send it as a bunch of RTP traffic, which is also a UDP stream. Uh, you can send it as a TCP session. And you can also send it as SCTP. So you can send the, the, uh, the tap. Uh, over port 53 as a bunch of UDP packets. And so all the packet filters in the network think it's DNS traffic. No one filters DNS, ask, D and ask Dan Kaminsky. Um, the fifth problem is that this interface is highly susceptible to packet spoofing because it's just a single UDP packet that you need to, to issue an interception request. Uh, now, there are a couple access lists that people might have specified, and they're not useless. Um, Usually, a service provider will specify an access list that says that routers will only take SNMP traffic from devices on the network that are part of the service provider's management LAN. Uh, and this is, this is useful because you have to get these engine values. Um, it's theoretically possible to get the engine values without actually requesting them from the router. Uh, the engine ID defaults to the MAC address of the router, uh, which you might be able to get from the network, possibly. Um, the uh, the uh, uh, the other values start counting from zero, and so they have a bias toward low numbers, which might make them easy to predict. Uh, so, you know, it's, 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 it's sort of in this gray area between, it's not impossible, but it might be impractical. And so I think that a, a, a service provider infrastructure access list probably uh, mitigates this a little bit. And so this is what I think is a realistic attack scenario. Um, in this case, the attacker has owned a computer that's in the service provider management network. Uh, that's not far-fetched at all. Uh, although uh, many of those computers would not be as protected as carefully as the mediation device. Uh, and he generates this interception request, which he sends from that network to the router. And then the router sends the intercepted traffic out to the internet to his box out there. Um, there is another access list that you can specify, and it ends up being useful, but not by itself. Um, it's also something that I don't think anyone does because it's not well documented. You can specify an access list for an SNMP user group. So uh, the SNMP user group that has access to perform intercepts could be constrained to come only from the IP address of the mediation device. Uh, so the, the, the thing about that is that it's, the attacker can use the fact that he's on the service provider network to get the engine values from the router. And then he, when he forms his interception request, he can just spoof that from the mediation device's address and it will get accepted. So that doesn't fix the problem. I also don't think anyone's doing it because it's not in the SNMP hardening guides. It's not in the lawful intercept guide. You really probably don't know about it unless you like playing around with the question mark on the iOS console. So. Um, another problem is that there's no requirement for encryption. And I don't think you can actually do this safely unless you're encrypting it. But I know that there are a lot of providers out there that do not encrypt this. Uh, Cisco says, although encryption is not necessarily a requirement, it is highly recommended. Um, there are two kinds of encryption which you could potentially use, and they have different security properties. W one thing you could do is SNMP v3 has its own built-in encryption. Uh, and you could use it, and it's not a bad idea because it protects you from that password guessing vulnerability that I talked about because there's a different key that's used for the encryption, uh, and so the attacker would also have to get that key. Um, however, uh, even if you did that, I, I'm still concerned about the security of this interface, particularly from insiders. 
uh, because there's no audit trail, you can still spoof the packets, and the output stream goes anywhere on the internet.